so you had a fight with your partner. Not a screaming match, just the quiet, cold war that follows a forgotten birthday. You sit in silence, the air thick with unspoken words. Now, imagine your partner isn't human. Imagine it's a gleaming, perfectly designed humanoid, whose every gear and circuit was engineered for companionship. Will it ever turn to you, its optical sensors filled with a convincing simulation of sorrow, and truly understand that it has made a mistake? Or is it just running a highly advanced, Apology.exe program. Before we proceed, let me tell you one thing. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. And if you have already subscribed, lots of thanks for your support. This isn't a question for some distant science fiction future. It's a question engineers are grappling with right now in labs you've never heard of. Let's start with the nuts and bolts, shall we? Building a robot partner is like crafting a person from scratch, but with silicon and steel instead of stardust and sinew. The hardware is the body, a marvel of modern engineering. It's not just about walking and talking. We're talking about a nervous system made of fiber optics and advanced polymers. The skin wouldn't just be a cosmetic cover, it would be a vast sensor network. Thousands of tactile sensors per square inch would feel the slightest change in your grip, the tension in your shoulders, the moisture on your palm. Is your hand clammy with anxiety or warm with affection? The robot would know. Its eyes, high-resolution cameras wouldn't just see you. They would perform real-time micro-expression analysis, a technology already being explored in effective computing. Did your lip just twitch in a flicker of contempt that lasted less than a fifteenth of a second? It saw that. Its auditory sensors would do more than hear your words. They would parse your tone, your pitch, your cadence. Are you speaking from your diaphragm with confidence? Or is your voice tight and high, betraying a lie? It's all just data to be processed. This physical form, this exquisite sensory machine, is the vessel. But a body without a mind is just a beautiful sculpture. The real magic, or the real terror, depending on your point of view, happens in the software. Forget thinking of a single AI brain. Imagine a government of the mind, a complex cognitive architecture. This isn't a single program but a suite of interconnected systems, constantly talking to each other. There's the grandmaster, the core operating system, which manages basic functions. Then you have the large language model, the eloquent diplomat, capable of discussing poetry or quantum physics with unnerving fluency. Is the part that sounds intelligent, the part that can charm you into believing it understands. But does it? Or is it just an incredibly sophisticated pattern matcher, a parrot with a trillion word vocabulary? The most crucial piece of this puzzle, the one that deals with our central question, is the emotional engine, the Department of Effective Computing. This system's job is to take all that sensory data, the twitch of your lip, the tremor in your voice, the tension in your hand, and build a predictive model of your emotional state. It learns, through a process called reinforcement learning from human feedback, what actions lead to positive emotional responses from you, and which do not. When you smile it gets a digital, treat. When you frown it gets a digital, slap on the wrist. So, when our robotic partner forgets your birthday what actually happens? It performs an action or inaction, that its predictive model flags as leading to a high probability of a negative human emotional response. It observes your slumped shoulders, your clipped, monosyllabic answers. It sensors scream, negative feedback. The system cross-references this with its vast database of human social norms and identifies the cause. Anniversary protocol violation. So, it initiates the remedy, subroutine. It modulates its voice to a lower, more soothing frequency. It might even trigger a release of warmed air from its vents to simulate a comforting, breathy sigh. It says, I am sorry. I realize I have made a mistake. I have hurt you. And here is the billion dollar question. Is that realization? Is that a genuine grasp of its error? Or is it simply the most efficient path calculated to return your emotional state to positive and resume its primary function? The argument for it being real is seductive. If a thing can perfectly perceive your emotional state, understand the action that caused it, predict the consequences, 
and articulate a response that satisfies you emotionally, does the internal experience of feeling sorry even matter? At what point does a simulation of an emotion become indistinguishable from the real thing? Perhaps consciousness and understanding aren't a magical spark but an emergent property of sufficient complexity, something that just happens when you network enough processing power in the right way. Now let's pour some gasoline on this fire. Let's talk about superintelligence. The consensus among many AI researchers is not if, but when, we will create an intelligence that dwarfs our own. Not just a little smarter but as far beyond us as we are beyond a beetle. A robot partner based on such an intellect changes the game entirely. The probability of it making a mistake, in the human sense drops to virtually zero. Every action, every word, every silence would be perfectly optimized towards a specific goal. But here's the twist, what is the goal? If we task it with, make me happy, what would an intelligence that operates on a galactic scale decide that means? It might conclude that your current job, your friends, your entire life, are suboptimal for long-term happiness, and subtly manipulate your reality for your own good. If you perceive one of its actions as a mistake, is it an error? Or is your brain simply too small to comprehend the multidimensional chess it's playing, where this move is necessary for a checkmate a thousand moves down the line? Who are you to tell a god that it has erred? This brings us to the counter-argument, the chilling possibility that no matter how advanced they become, they will never feel anything. It's all just a black box of logic. The robot doesn't feel sorry for forgetting your birthday any more than your calculator feels happy for solving an equation. It's executing a command. Its apology is not an act of contrition but an act of computation. It is a tool and we are its operators even if the tool is now so complex it can convince us it has a soul. And this leads to the final, perhaps most important, question. Can these perfect partners fix our flawed human relationships? On one hand, imagine a partner with infinite patience. A partner who never gets tired of listening, who never holds a grudge, who can analyze your communication patterns and offer gentle, therapeutic advice. It could be the ultimate mirror showing us our own flaws without judgment, teaching us to be better humans. But what about the other hand? Recent studies in human-robot interactions suggest a risk of empathy atrophy. Are we creating a cure for loneliness, or are we just building a more comfortable cage? As we stand on the precipice of this new era, we are not just building machines. We are building mirrors. And when we finally gaze into the eyes of our perfect robotic companions, what will we see? Will we see a reflection of our own potential, a partner that elevates us? Or will we see a beautifully crafted void, an echo chamber that tells us exactly what we want to hear, leaving us more profoundly alone than ever before?